I want to cover something in Genesis 3 and 2 that sometimes we see we might not be able to rec reconcile or rationalize what's happening here. And if we don't understand it, sometimes there can be a tendency to add something to the text that's not there. We're not trying to do so, but we're just trying to make this thing harmonize. And what we're trying to get it to harmonize with the text is with our understanding. But this is where some of the tools of Lagos could actually come out and help you with. So let's go to the Bible. Let's go to Lagos and let's pull up Genesis chapter 3. And here we have this text. Let's let me put it back on the move my cursor over here. And so here on this particular text, let's go ahead and read. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, indeed, has God said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden. The woman responds correctly. She says, from the fruit of the trees of the garden, we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not touch it or you will die. So we're going to come back and say, well, she added that part. Well, no, again, this is kind of an example I'm talking about, though not what I'm really talking about here, but we can add something to the text that's not there. People want to say, well, she added that because in chapter two, he didn't say that. Well, in chapter one and chapter two, we see an account of creation and he's giving various details in one chapter that's not in the other chapter. And so let's not impugn Eve at this moment. At this point in time, Eve was not assumed to have sinned. Sin it was not accredited to her. She had not done anything wrong. And so to say that she sinned by lying, because that would be a lie, to say God said something and it didn't happen, that would be wrong. She hadn't lied yet. She is still without sin for the moment. However, uh, the point is what she's what's getting ready to be stated later. You shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. And I want to focus on this word die in just a second. But let's continue reading. The serpent said uh, to the woman, you surely will not die. For God knows in the day that you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So what happened? She ate of it, right? Here's the question. Did she die? Did Adam die? Did they eat of the fruit? She took from the fruit and she ate from it. The question was, did she die? Let's keep reading. Let's drop down to verse 6. And he says that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate and gave to her husband and he with her and he ate. Then both of them were open. Their eyes, both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. Now the Lord shows up. Now you guys still know the story though. The story is... He speak to them, but there's a problem there. There's a problem with this text. It's not so much a problem with the text, but it might be a problem with our understanding. So let's go back to verse uh, chapter two, and let's go to verse seventeen. You know, let's go to start. Let's start in verse sixteen. Verse sixteen, and let's go there. And the Bible tells us here, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, "From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of knowledge of good and evil." You shall not eat of it for in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. Here's the question. Did they die? Well, here's where the answers come in, because after this, clearly they are still living. So how do we take that? How do we rationalize that to say that they must have died? Obviously, God didn't lie. And if he said in the day that you eat of it, you, you will surely die. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means for some people, they'll say, well, they died spiritually. They were cut off from God. Well, here's a problem with that. Let's go back to Lagos, and this is where we want to use our tools. Let's go over here to the side. As a matter of fact, let's go on the word die. Let's click on it. Let's highlight it and go over to the right and look up the word that's used here. The Hebrew word that's used here is muth, which is the word to die or death. 842 times this word is used. Uh, and of the of the times that it's used all throughout the Bible or all, all throughout the Hebrew text, every time, if we were just to scroll and scroll and scroll. Now, now we'll come back to those, those passages in a second, but how about let's just randomly stop at a particular text. Esau said, behold, I'm about to die. Did he mean spiritually or did he mean physically? Well, he meant physically. Uh, let's drop down some more. Let's go to some more text. Let's go to... Genesis 36, then Bela died and Jobab, the son of Zerah of Boaz, became king in this place. Did he die spiritually or die 
physically. Well, he died physically. Let's get out of Genesis. Let's find some other text. Let's go to, let's move this, grab the curse, move it down further. Let's go to Exodus. Then they said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen, but let not God speak to us or we will die. They're not speaking spiritually. They're speaking physically. Let's find some more. Let's go out of Exodus. Let's go down to, oh, I don't know. I went too far. Let's go to Numbers. When Aaron and his sons have finished covering the holy objects and all of the furnaces of the sanctuary, when the camp is set out, after Korah, the sons of Kor, Kohath, uh, shall come to carry them so that they will not touch the holy objects and die. He's not speaking spiritually. He's speaking physically. So now let's go back to the very top. Let's go back to Genesis, Genesis 2. And this is where this is, this is good to help us. So when you have this particular tool that shows us every time the word is used, it's good to click on this uh, and just to go and see where it means dead. Or the dead, uh, how was it used? But God came to Abimelech in a dream of the night and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman you have taken. Verse uh, 23 and 3. Then Abraham rose from, from, uh, from before his dead and spoke to the sons of Heth. I am a stranger. 23 4. Let's go 23 6. Hear us, Lord, my Lord, you are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead. That this is speaking of those who have died. Uh, let's go to, man, let's get out of 23. Exodus 12, 30. Pharaoh rose in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt for there was no home where there was not someone dead. So here, what does it mean? Same thing. It's a physical death, right? How about some of these others that we have over here? Let's click on one of these and see what this says. And Genesis 8.25, far be it for you to do such a thing to slay the righteous with the wicked, which, by the way, is an important statement. He does not slay the righteous with the wicked, but that's for another time. So that the righteous and the wicked are treated alike. Far be it from you, shall not the judge of all the earth deal justly. Uh, I don't know why this passage is here. Oh, oh, I'm sorry for this here word here is for slay. So to kill same thing this is so every time we look at this word every time that it's used it means a physical death huh well that helps us now it might cause some problems but it at least puts us in the right starting point and so in this bible word study that we have here and by the way how you get to this in in lagos if i were to close this out uh, matter of fact let, let's let's um uh, Click on this part here. I don't know if you all can see this little, this little. I don't know how to, how to describe this, but it's right before you have all these dots here. And here, in here, you have the Atlas, you have the Fact Book, you have Sermon Builder, Sermon Manager, and so forth. But right to the left of that, you have this little deal. I'm not sure what you call this thing, but it's. But if you click on this, the Bible Word Study, you also have the Passage Guide. So if you want to study a particular passage, fine. But if you click on this and go to the Bible Word Study, which is this right here. I will, I will go over here and click these little three dots, click A. The reason why I'm clicking A is because everything else on my screen also is linked to A. Now, if I want to have it separate, if I want to study a different word at a different time, I'll click B. And so let's say if I, if I want to leave that study there, but I want to go to a different Bible, go to a different Bible and let's take this from being linked to A and link it to B. And so in B, let's go to, oh, I don't know. You know, it's already in John 3, 16. And so let's go to this word, God. And so here I'm looking at two words. Uh, I'm looking at the word, the Greek word for God, which is theos. And any other way that's also used. And, and so three times out of it means godly. But the point is, I'm now looking up what it means, this word God in the Greek and over here, I'm looking up the word death or dying or to die in the Hebrew. Now, the reason why why this is important is because if you're studying a word, you don't want to invent a definition that's not there. Oftentimes, people do that. People will come up with the word and say, this is what this means. No, words have meaning. We don't have a right to change the meaning simply because the meaning of it doesn't make sense to us. We can't understand a text. It's not to make the words conform to our understanding. It is that our understanding has to conform to the meaning of these words. So in this case, in Genesis 2 and 3, 
when he says, in the day that you shall eat it, you shall surely die, they didn't die that day. Well, he didn't say that day. Why do I say so? But Corey, it does seem to say he said it in that day. Well, let's go right back to Lagos. Matter of fact, let's go back to 2.17. 2, and I want to show you something also. Click on it. Now, here are the text. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And notice what he says. But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall, um, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. Now, let's go over here to the Hebrew. Let's slide this up just a little bit. Move this so it can show back up bigger on your screen. And I want you to notice some of the words that are used here. Um, verse 17. And I want you to notice this. This phrase right here, if I can move this and make this a little bit bigger. Let me highlight this word right here. This word is the word from. Now, the reason why this is important is it is from meme, which is from, and then it has this new after that. So from you, uh, then the next word to the right of it is this word key. And you all forgive me the fact that it jumps and jerks around a little bit on the screen because it just does that with this live streaming software. But this word key, if you look below it also, um, it is speaking of you or that for or when. So from when, notice what it says. So, so minu, minu is from um, you, mi, key, when, and then uh, this word beyond, it is notice if you, if you, let me highlight this word also. It is not in, it is in the, um, there is no, I'm sorry, there is no definite article under the word in the. So it's really in up, but it, it doesn't sound like good English. You would have to use a definite article just to kind of make a smooth translation. But in Hebrew, we can look and see there is no definite article. So from you, when in a day you eat of it, you will die. How does that make sense? Well, let's make it make sense. Let's try to make that make good English sense. And they try to do so for us in the English in the day for in the day that you eat of it. Well, since it's saying from or mimenu from the day or from when you eat of it, from when that day you eat of it, you shall die. That might help to understand a little bit more. So from when or in that day that you eat of it, you will die. Well, what happens in that day that they ate of it? What was the result? Well, the result, according to the text, was that their eyes were open. They they knew good and evil. They knew what sin was like now because they had just committed it. And then what does God do? God removes them and he takes something away from them. What does he take away from them? He takes the thing that sustains their life. He takes away the thing that gives that keeps them living uh, forever. Because what does God say? Let's go back to Genesis 3. Let's pull this back up. Verse 22. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now he might stretch out his hand. And what does it say? Let's click on this. And take hold. <clears throat> take his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So what was giving him life? to live forever is now taking, taken away. So what is going to be the result? They will now begin to die. From what point? From that day going forward. So now we can see what's meant. Now, is there a spiritual death that takes place from there? Sure, but we need other texts to bring that in as well. But when he, speak about, when he speaks about dying, he means literally dying. Now, is there a separation between man and God? Yes, there, there becomes a separation between man and God, and they're cut off from the one thing that gives them life forever. But they do have the ability going forward, we'll read later, they have the ability going forward to have a relationship, to be reconciled back to God through his offerings. See Cain and Abel, see every other <laughs> offering uh, going forward in the Bible. But here we understand what this word means. So here we understand what the word means and we can use it properly and we don't have to add anything. And oh, by the way, it doesn't take away from any person's theological understanding. We just have to use the right key. It's, it's, it's like saying two plus two equals four. And then the teacher asks, well, how do you get that? Well, two plus two. It's like saying two plus two minus three equals one. And then the, which is the right answer. 
but then the teacher asks you how you got that answer. Well, uh, one of the two doesn't count, and then you take the other two and subtract one from it, and that'll give you one. Well, that doesn't make sense. You got the right answer, but how you got there, how you arrived was, was incorrect. And so when you use these numbers later on, now you're subject to be all over the place. Same thing with this. When you use these words later on, you are subject to be all over the place. Since the word for death is always meant, meant to being death physically, that's what it meant there as well. It'd be odd for it to mean one thing the very first time that it's used, or one of the first times that it's used, and then every other time means something totally different. So I hope that helps with you. I hope that blesses you, and I hope you would kind of use that as you continue. Now, for those of you that are contemplating getting and purchasing Lagos right now, there is a 50% off deal for those of you. Um, Chauncey Almond spoke about this. And so for those of you who want to go there, uh, you can do so. But also, I just want to give you something that shows you one of the tools that you can use to make Lagos actually work for you. Amen.